All right. So, <laughs> you saw the title. Uh, tonight is going to be about uh, corporate collusion, unethical media practices, and uh, propaganda leading to fascism. Uh, and directly stemming from fascism. It's it's going to be a real fun episode. Um, and it's all <laughs> supported by um, this, this rabbit hole you can go down from reading a tweet about Barbie. Yeah, the Mattel doll. I'm going to be talking about Barbie. But... The context is, you know how I've been talking about how Twitter, a pack of liars, how they're literally lying to you and engaging in media manipulation for their own profit? Well, um, this particular instance is one of their promoted tweets, which, by the way, is platform manipulation, if I ever done heard of it. Um directly paying money to get your ad seen. Uh, in this particular case, the ad is for Washington Post. And <laughs> let me just read it. Because uh, I don't think you'll believe me uh, if, if, if I don't read this. Uh, Barbie, the official account, Need some positivity in your day? Barbie is proud to partner with Washington Post on the empathy issue. A curated selection of uplifting and positive stories of kindness. Tap to view. Hashtag spread some empathy. I know when I think empathy, I think I need to hear from the makers of plastic dolls and accessories for plastic dolls. I know that's what I need. What I need is that. Um, but, uh, my response to that, because that's fucking trash... Uh, is that I went on a sort of tirade. First off, you can sort of see that the empathy issue is nothing but fluff. 100%. It's an ad, it's fluff, and it's trash. Um, so I, I, I posted, this is what friendly fascism looks like. And no, I'm not joking. Uh, great book. Also, good song by Consolidated. Great band. Uh, if you guys want to go check them, there are things out, then feel free. But in general, uh, yeah, we live under a structure of friendly fascism. That is fascism uh, with a new coat of paint that makes it seem like it's not fascism. Um, CIA paid CEO of Amazon owns Washington Post. This is my tweet. Uses it to be a stenographer for the state. Partners with a company whose products he sells. Uses a Twitter ad to get a promotion. Pushes feel-good narrative while things are in shambles. No conflict of interest here. Isn't it fucking great that a media outlet, a news outlet, is going around spreading um, an ad in the form of propaganda? Isn't that great? Isn't it great that that same outlet is trying to start a hashtag so that everybody feels like they have to get in on it and help the ad work? Isn't it great that they're doing this uh, in conjunction with a uh, a, a press outlet. <laughs> um, nothing unethical there. That is owned by the same person who also sells Barbies. 
Nothing unethical there. This isn't unethical, and if you disagree, you're the one who's wrong. It's... It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny that this is what passes for sort of news these days. That that this is seen as anything other than a multi-page ad whoring themselves out for a corporation. Um, but it's more than that because the CIA literally paid and continues to pay uh, Jeff Bezos and the rest of the folks at Amazon uh, a shit ton of money um, and Amazon is a stenographer for the state what that means is that they'll basically say whatever the government wants them to um, didn't used to be this way really didn't uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it is at least at this point um, and it doesn't help that the person who owns it is a CIA uh, shill. It makes the entire uh, paper a bunch of, what do you call it, hacks when it comes to talking about oppression, when it comes to talking about uh, your civil rights in the face of uh, in intelligence, that being the apparatus that can uh, control you, that can... Uh, know everything about you that can, um, you know, kind of get inside your head and sometimes literally through experiments like the ones surrounding the MK programs. You know, that one, that institution, right? Um, this is the one that is directly influencing the owner of a newspaper, you know, people call people like me batshit conspiracy theorists. You know, they they do that because they don't want to confront what I'm saying. And they do it especially when I go after the fact that intelligence and government, the state in general, controls fucking media. But how can this be any clearer? How can it be any clearer? So, I'm going to read... Uh, the, the sort of smoking guns in this regard. This is from The Register. Simon Sharwood. Amazon launches secret region. So secret it's endorsed by the CIA. Um, the rest of us just get a 0.04% improvement in EC2 reliability to a guaranteed 99.99%. Amazon Web Services has launched a secret region, which we know about because the CIA has endorsed it. The new region is certified to run workloads rated secret on the U.S. data classifications, which proceeds from unclassified to sensitive, then to secret, and finally to top secret. AWS claimed the launch is significant as it means U.S. government users can turn to one cloud for most of their needs, rather than having to shop for multiple clouds for data with different sensitivities. The region is not only very secure, it's also been made available to U.S. intelligences through an existing commercial cloud services, C2S, deal with AWS. The cloud Colossus was even able to secure a quote from CIA CIO John Edwards, who rated the new region, quote, a key component of the Intel community's multi-fabric cloud strategy and as significant as the C2S deal. Government users tend to stick around for a long time, so a secret region has the potential to be a long-term money spinner for AWS and very bad news for legacy IT companies that have often made a virtue of their size and stability when selling to the public sector, AWS satisfying Spook's desire for security and stitching up purchasing arrangements therefore shows that the U.S. government is well and truly awake to public cloud possibilities. <laughs> Amazon has also cooked up something for the rest of us with a new service-level agreement for its EC2 infrastructure as a service offering. The changes from the old agreement are minor but telling. The company has gone from guaranteeing 99.95% uptime to 99.99% uptime. Uptime is assessed monthly. 
Uh, I'm going to include a link to everything I go over in this article. But that's not all. There's more. So the, there's another article on the register that referenced this one. Um, but essentially, uh, that CIA is, uh, is, is, sorry, the CIA-backed Amazon is selling face recognition tech to U.S. snoops and cops. Um, a ACLU warns of biases in AWS cloud tech. Thomas Claiborne in San Francisco. Um, so, so it goes over the fact that, uh, that basically, uh, the ACLU expressed dismay that AWS has been urging U.S. Gov agencies to use its recognition API for state-sponsored facial recognition. The advocacy organization published emails obtained over a six-month investigation documenting marketing efforts by Amazon employees to convince officials in Orlando, Florida, and Washington County, Oregon to deploy its cloud-based image analysis tech. Amazon, Google, and Microsoft all pitch assorted artificially intelligent image, facial, and data analysis service to paying customers in both the public and private sector to say nothing of the other vendors that solicit government IT business for hosted or on-premise products. Amazon, for one, services the CIA, and its AWS cloud platform is backed by Uncle Sam's snoops. But rather than worry about all that, the ACLU singled out AWS's recognition for the rights-violating potential of the tech, and for Amazon's encouragement of such uses. Quote, Recognition marketing materials read like a user manual for authoritarian surveillance. Let me read that again. Recognition marketing materials read like a user manual for authoritarian surveillance, said Nicole Ozer, Technology and Civil Liberties Director for the ACLU of California, in a statement. Also, quote, once a dangerous surveillance system like this is turned against the public, the harm can't be undone. In a letter sent to Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, the ACLU demanded that Amazon stop powering a government surveillance infrastructure that poses a grave threat to customers and communities across the country. So, basically, um, this letter uh, includes such gems, and, and I have it pulled up here. This letter includes such gems as... Um, People should be free to walk down the street without being watched by the government. Facial recognition in American communities threatens this freedom. In over-policed communities of color, it could effectively eliminate it. The federal government could use this facial recognition technology to continually track immigrants as they embark on new lives. Local police could use it to identify political protesters captured by officer body cams. With recognition, Amazon delivers these dangerous surveillance powers directly to the government. Rather than restrict government use of recognition, Amazon is helping governments deploy it on both coasts, according to documents obtained by ACLU affiliates in three states. It has provided product support and offered free consulting services to government customers. Amazon has solicited feedback on new product features for law enforcement. Amazon even signed a secrecy agreement with a prominent law enforcement customer. Despite all of this, Amazon imposes no meaningful restrictions on how governments can use recognition. Amazon recognition is primed for abuse in the hands of government. This product poses a grave threat to communities, including people of color and immigrants, and to the trust and respect Amazon has worked to build. Amazon must act swiftly to stand up for civil rights and civil liberties, including those of its own customers, and take recognition off the table for governments. So there's more to the letter. There's more to uh, the second article I read. I basically read the f entire first one. But it was short as fuck, so whatever. Um, go to these sites. Share these articles if you want. My point in bringing all that up is that Amazon is already a toady for the state. They already want you to think everything is A-OK. -okay and not question it too much. The fact that they're getting money directly from the U.S. government to help them spy on you. <laughs> isn't that fucking great? Um, and ain't it also fucking grand that this 
uh, outlet has been taking a lot of flack for that recently. From actual leftists, not shit libs, and from conservatives concerned about the intelligence apparatus because, you know, something, something deep state, um, they've been catching a lot of flack for Bezos being uh, paid by the CIA to help them spy on us. So why not put out this fucking campaign? Why not get Barbie to back up the Washington Post, keep making Bezos money, and hey, while you're there, fucking just use our product links, you know? Go to Amazon, buy a Barbie. We sell those. Um, not at all unethical, right? I, uh, I was on a show called Gingerarchy recently. Uh, Trisha Stewart Mann. I was also basically debating Hody Johns. Um, but it was like a reasonably civil conversation, I think. I don't know. My, my meter is fucked up because I'm kind of an asshole. But, like, ultimately, um, it was at least productive. And it was about Gamergate. And I remember being involved in that and catching a lot of flack for being involved in that, including after it was over with, basically. And uh, let me tell you, the reason I got involved was because of the Game Journal pros leaks. The reason I got involved was because of the gamers are dead narrative and the fact that there was clear media collusion. The reason I got involved is because I already hated the media and I already thought that there was a collusion effort behind the scenes. Um, and this confirmed it, but in a way that I could sort of bring other people on board to my other more nutty conspiracy theories using the Gamergate hashtag as a way to sort of get them on my profile. And the, the, the idea of ethics in journalism is fucking good. And if you don't like that, suck any sort of orifice. Um, the idea was always ethics in journalism. And I like, you know, ethics in journalism. And this is a really good example of where ethics aren't in fucking journalism. So I called it friendly fascism. Washington Post basically doesn't go against the state, and they'll support whatever fucking narrative is necessary that the powers that should not be can continue to make money and get power. That's what they do now. Maybe they were different before. Maybe they still hung on to some of their writers who were more okay with them back then, um, but less okay with them now. I don't fucking know. I don't know what the inside baseball is here. I just know that they're run by somebody who's accepting money from the CIA, and that's shady as fuck. And because they've been catching a lot of flack lately, why not associate it with a popular toy brand? And if you go to the fucking hashtag, I watched some of these videos. They're like kids playing with these dolls and saying, being nice to each other is good. Yeah, it is. How nice is it to be a CIA shill, Bezos? How nice is it? You know, and it wouldn't surprise me uh, if I got banned from Twitch very quickly here um, because of having criticized Daddy Beezy. It wouldn't fucking surprise me. But either way, the point is that, like, this is really shady shit. And if you don't believe me that this is all fascist, let me just tell you how Barbie got Barbie's start. Uh, by reading something from the Intelligencer. Uh, in the early days of the Second World War, it came to the attention of Heinrich Himmler, leader of the Schutzstaffel, I think that's what it was called. I might not be remembering that correctly. SS, and known as the executioner, that venereal disease was eliminating nearly as many German soldiers from battlefield as enemy bullets. Himmler discussed the situation with his boss, Adolf Hitler, and bemoaned the fact that men were being laid low after brief adventures with Parisian prostitutes. Thus was born the idea of a new and realistic sex object for soldiers. The sculptor, 
Arthur Rink was put in charge of a team at the Racial Hygiene and Demographic Biology Research Institute. He came up with new plasticized polymers and silicones and created a woman nearly life-size and that evidently felt just right. These were distributed in the theaters of war, and there, were, there was soon noted a decline in venereal disease rates. The only complaint was that the toys were too big to lug around, and thus was born a 17-inch toy that was named Lily, after a conniving woman on the make in a popular cartoon strip. She had a cute blonde bob and wore sexy clothes, but in truth, put bluntly, Lily was a masturbation aid. Her features purposely bland so the user could supply his own fantasies. The first of the new toys were sent to the island of Jersey for a tryout with Germany's occupying force. Lily more than lived up to demands placed on her. Alas, for the Axis powers, there was no Lily Nazi soldier, but she had an active post-war life being sold in men's barbershops and in nightclubs. It was in a latter establishment that American tourist woman Ruth Handler met first her and first met her and was impressed that Lily was an adult-looking doll. Others had always been child dolls. She returned to the States and showed Lily to her husband and to her daughter. They both thought Lily was great. The husband just happened to work for the Mattel toy, toy Company. His board of directors agreed with his opinion of the sex toy and started manufacturing Lily, although under another name, Barbie, a.k.a. Barbara Millicent Roberts. Later, Ruth Handler put out the story that she'd bought her Lily in a curio shop, shop in Switzerland where it was listed as a collector's item. So, basically, I thought that was bullshit. I looked up the Intelligencer, tried to see, you know, that this site was full of shit. Don't find anything against it. And then check the Wikipedia page. And this was like you know, a significant period of time ago, and I've been considering making a video on the subject, but let me be very blunt and clear here. Um, the Wikipedia page includes very sort of numbed history. History. Ruth Handler watched her daughter Barbara play with paper dolls and noticed that she often enjoyed giving them adult roles. At the time, most children's toys were representations of infants. Realizing that there could be a gap in the market, Handler suggested the idea of an adult body doll to her husband, Elliot, a co-founder of the Mattel Toy Company. He was unenthusiastic about the idea, as were Mattel's directors. During a trip to Europe in 1956 with her children, Barbara and Kenneth Ruth Handler came across a German toy doll called Built Lily. The adult figure doll was exactly what Handler had in mind, so she purchased three of them. She gave one to her daughter and took the others back to Mattel. The Lily doll was based on a popular character appearing in a comic strip drawn by Reinhard Breuthen uh, to, for the newspaper Build. Lily was a blonde bombshell, a working girl who knew what she wanted and was not above using men to get it. The Lily doll was first sold in Germany in 1955, and although it was initially sold to adults, it became a popular thing with children who enjoyed dressing her up in outfits that were available separately. Upon her return to the U.S., Handler redesigned the doll, and the doll was given a new name, Barbie, after Handler's daughter, Barbara. The doll made its debut at the American blah, 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 blah. Ain't it fun? And, and like, their, their source was from Messy Nessie. And, uh, it includes shots of the original, essentially, sex doll and how it basically looks exactly fucking like Barbie. <laughs> Barbie was originally made by and for fascists. How fucking appropriate that Barbie be the face of this friendly fascist propaganda campaign. Just fucking saying, you know, just saying maybe a woman who was originally designed by Nazis to help them get off is exactly the kind of thing you would need to distract people from the fact that your government is a little bit too much like fucking Nazis.
Just saying. Call me loopy. Call me an evil conspiracy theorist. Claim I'm reading too much into this, but at least you'll watch the fucking video. So if you're new here, feel free to like and subscribe. And my video is sponsored by Opsec Drip. Feel free to subscribe to that channel uh, to let him know that his money went to something good. And if you want about 60 seconds of libertarian, shemog-laden uh, news action with 240 glorious pixels. Feel free to subscribe to mine. The link is there. Blah, blah. You know, Barbie bad. Smash the state.